Praise the Lord. Welcome. Welcome back to First Friday. How many of you were with us last month? Most of you. Wow, did we have an awesome time in this place around the Seder table. If you have never been to a Passover Seder, then you need to make sure that you mark your calendar for next year. Uh, we had about 2,000 people, well, it was a little over 2,000 people in this auditorium who came out to celebrate the Passover. The, the wonderful thing that happened with the calendar this year was that the first night of Passover was also Good Friday, also First Friday. And when I saw them pulling back the curtains for a First Friday meeting, I said, I'm going to make a declaration that every First Friday is Good Friday. Uh, it is good. It is good to praise the Lord. But it's awesome to, uh, to see this place alive and shouting in praises to our God. Tonight was designed for you. Um, and, and we're just having a ball up here. We're, we don't get to you know, do extended times of worship very often because there's just so many bodies that come and go in this auditorium. The schedule, as you might imagine, with 11,000 people here at Celebration, to get them all in in five services and then the campus is going as well. It, uh, it can be quite a challenge, but we wanted tonight to stretch out our tent pegs a little bit and, and just have some time to be in the presence of God. It's what we were made for. You know, God doesn't need anything from us. He is all sufficient. The joy of this relationship is that he desires us. He doesn't need us. He doesn't need any more praise in heaven. He's got it covered. The angels do a great job. He's got choirs. He's got angels. He's got cherubim and seraphim and butabim and rodabim and, and all the rest of them. And, and they've been doing it for a long time. They don't need to join us in that. We need to join them, actually. In his presence, we find ourselves. We find our, our being because we were created in his image. And I can already tell I'm, I'm, off, I'm off my notes. Uh, it's a tradition for me. And... Um, and since uh, we're here tonight, I may just go traditional and, and dump the notes. But I wanted us to have an opportunity tonight to spend some quality time in his presence. Didn't you love that song? Through it all, through it all. This worship team does such an awesome job. Colby, amen. from our, our friends back there on the soundboard and the video and audio. It's such a blessing for me. I, many of you probably don't know me very well, but this is, this is a dream come true for me, to be able to do a Shabbat meeting, a, a Friday Shabbat service in a place like this with, with all of the stuff that comes along behind. It's, it's amazing the amount of energy and the, and the number of people that it takes to open the doors and, and make a, a place for you. And I'm very grateful to all who do. We have people helping with uh, child care, their children, and a lot of people that volunteer that you don't even see. And I am so grateful that God has given us this opportunity. But as we prepare this place and open the doors and create a space for you to come and to worship the King, I wanted to speak to you for a few minutes tonight about us. To open the doors and create a place for the King, but not the door of your 
condo, apartment, your villa, whatever it is that God has blessed you with where you can call home. But the doors of our heart, this place of praise is such a place of victory. It's such a place of power. It's such a place of healing and deliverance. I want to take just a few moments tonight to maybe stir some things around in your heart that you might know but maybe need a little dusting off. I wrote a few things down over the last couple of days that uh, I thought maybe were even profound for a guy like me, so I know that they didn't come from me. But In this place of praise, I want you to know that you can take control of your life. If you feel like things are spinning out of control, if you feel like you don't really have a handle on it, I want to encourage you to be a praiser of God. Let me give you a couple of scriptures. The first one we'll start with is Psalm 22, verse 3. I know you know it very well, but it says, you inhabit or you are enthroned upon. Another translation says, you are the praise of your people Israel. And that word there, praise, tehillah. Say that for me, tehillah. Yeah, we're going to get a lot of Hebrew lessons over the first Fridays. Tehillah. You inhabit the praises. You are enthroned upon the praises. You are the praise of your people Israel. And that word tehillah is actually song of praise. It's not something that spiritual. So tonight as we lift up our songs of praise to the Lord... He says, through his prophet David, that he inhabits those praises. That's why the atmosphere changes every time we get together and we begin to lift up our tehillim. As we lift up our song of praise, he actually comes, he inhabits, he's enthroned upon, and he becomes the very song in our mouth. It's why it feels so good when you're here. It's why if you're dealing with things out there somewhere, you love coming here and you say, man, I wish I could feel like this all the time. I wish I could, I mean, the air just feels so clean. Why is that? Do they, do they filter it a special way here? Or? No, it's because the king that we worship is enthroned upon our praises. He actually inhabits these songs. That's why it gets thicker and thicker and thicker. That's why some of you feel like, man, I, I just want to bow right here. I, what's going on? It's what hooked me. For some of you that know my story, uh, I got invited to church a lot. Pretty girls, I found out, went to church. And at 22, 23, 24, 25, it seemed like the right thing to do. I had sung at the temple. I was in the temple choir. My voice teacher was the rabbi. He was the, excuse me, the cantor at our beautiful temple downtown Cleveland. But I didn't hear the kinds of praises that I'm hearing from you. Often we'd go to the temple because we felt like we needed to. We, it was our responsibility. Somebody's got to sit in those beautiful seats. But we never had an opportunity to express our heart and our, and our love. It was always something happening up in the front. And one day, this, this girl invited me to church, and, and I went. But it was a setup. I got blindsided. I was ambushed by the God that I'd been singing to in the temple but didn't know. I sat in my seat. I knew what to expect. 
there were the three, the three numbers on the wall up in front, and I know that there's a book in the front, right in front of me there, in the back of the seat in front of me. You take it out, and it corresponds to those numbers on the wall. You open it up, and please, I hope there's not eight whole verses to each one of these, because it just takes forever, and it wasn't that exciting. But what happened to me that unsuspecting Sunday morning was a young man got up, he sat on a stool, he brought a guitar with him, just him and a guitar. Now, I was a graduate student at Indiana University in vocal performance. I was a music snob. I had already been to Europe studying with some of the finest teachers. I wanted to be an opera singer and a cantor. That was my desire. And so I, I listened very carefully when music was coming along, whether it was a trombone or a cello or a voice. And I had pretty high standards. So when I saw this guy walk out in jeans and, you know, no shirt and a tie, and he didn't stand at attention, and he wasn't preparing to sing some operatic thing, I knew what to expect. It was church music. It was okay, it's for God, so whatever you want to do, you know, play your harmonica or... He sat on the stool and played his nylon string guitar. He opened his mouth and the atmosphere began to change in that place. I got blindsided. And I said to the young lady who had brought me, I said, what's happening here? And she was a Baptist. She didn't know either. Probably shouldn't have said, I always pick on Baptist. I don't know why. But that Baptist boy sitting on the stool who changed the atmosphere in that junior high auditorium that morning took me on a fishing trip a couple of weeks later and, and he led me to the one who had taken captive the atmosphere. I'll always be grateful for Jerry Williams. We spent the next five years, he and I, traveling around, singing to the king who had changed the atmosphere. But watch this progression, because I want to I deposit something in you tonight that can change the rest of your days here on this planet. Psalm 22, verse 3 says that he's enthroned upon, he inhabits, and he actually is the praise the song that we lift up. And Psalm 1611 says, you will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. So our songs of praise invite his presence. I like to say that we provoke his presence. We provoke his presence. Sometimes it takes a little bit of work on our part because maybe we just don't feel like it or maybe the timing just isn't right or whatever the thing might be. But if we'll get beyond our own flesh and lift up a song of praise, he'll inhabit that. His presence comes. In his presence, there's fullness of joy with pleasure at his right hand forevermore. You know why? Because when our king comes, he doesn't come empty-handed. He always comes for a reason. He always comes to bring us something good. And then the last scripture is Nehemiah 8.10. Nehemiah says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. That word strength is the word Ma'oz, Ma'oz, strength. In fact, one of his covenant names is Adonai Ma'oz, which means our shelter, our fortress, our place of safety. Chedva Adonai Ma'oz Shelcha, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Another thing about that name, Adonai Ma'oz, it, it's also related to the king of the castle. He's the king of the stronghold. 
And when we hide ourselves in him, in his presence, the king of the castle fights on your behalf. Praise is such a powerful tool in our lives. You know that the scriptures say that as a man thinks within himself, so is he. And it says that faith comes by hearing. So I want to suggest to you tonight that if you want to be strong, we need to change what we're listening to. You know, you're not going to be strong listening to easy jazz. I like easy jazz. But it doesn't do a thing for my life except maybe entertain me for a little while. If you listen to rap, I think your brain actually starts to dissolve. But that's just my opinion. But if you want to change your future, you need to think differently. And in order to think differently, because faith comes by hearing, you need to change what you're listening to. Do you have a challenge in the morning? Do you have a, a difficult ride to your place of business or to the school? Do you find that people are really aggressive on the streets now? Or is it just me? I, wrote a, I ride a, a Harley Davidson, so I'm always watching what people are doing as I'm gonna, about to pass or because ladies are putting on makeup. I mean, driving a car. I've seen some men with a newspaper spread out across the steering wheel, driving 60 miles an hour. And then, of course, there's, there's the one who has the cell phone up to their ear, and I'm about to pass on the left, and I don't know, are they going to move over? Are they going to stay where they are? But you know that you can turn your car into a sanctuary. And you can avoid all of that stress. And you can avoid all of that aggression simply by saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change what I'm listening to here. In fact, I challenge you to do it. Turn your car into a sanctuary. Do you have stress at your home? Do you have di difficulty in communication sometimes? Is there... Turn your home into a sanctuary. Provoke the presence of the Prince of Peace. I was just in a home um, several times over this last month over in Destin. And uh, friends of ours, they keep praise and worship running in their home 24-7. When they go to sleep, they just keep it running. It's there when I, when I wake up in their basement and come up for breakfast. The smells actually get me up, not the sound. The smells of breakfast cooking gets me up out of their basement. But I've noticed that, you know, their home has a real sense of peace and, and joy. And I've never heard strong words there. I've never heard an argument. I've never heard a, a stressful conversation. It's because... The Prince of Peace is the only one who can bring peace. And if we change the way what we're listening to, it changes what we believe. I really wanted to have tonight for you for a sanctuary, a place just to come aside. I know it's a beautiful day out there. My, my motorcycle was calling to me. It's a gorgeous motorcycle day. And I just had to tell him, just be quiet. I'll be back another day. Tomorrow I'll get up at 4 a.m. and fly to New York. So I, whatever it is tomorrow, I won't be there. Or Sunday I'll be somewhere else. And We just came back from Ecuador. In Ecuador, the Israeli ambassador came to our night of worship. The vice president's wife came. There's something about Latin America. There is something about those who speak Spanish. There's a revelation in those people. 
They love the presence of God. Do we have uh, any Hispanos here with us tonight? Oh, yeah. They're always the loudest. We'll be going to Colombia pretty soon, and um, we were just in uh, Tegucigalpa, Honduras. I spend a lot of time there. You know why? Because I think I get more than I give. I enjoy. Sometimes when I'm there leading worship, I'll just stop playing and stop singing and listen to them worship the Lord. I always tell them, Español es la lengua del cielo. Spanish is the, the language of heaven. They love that. I know it's Hebrew, but don't tell them. <laughs> they will hurt you. If you want to be strong, if you want to be an overcomer, if you want to change your future, be a person of praise. You know that Baptist guy with his nylon string guitar that led me to the Lord? The thing that was, he, he was weird. He was really strange. I mean, he, he really was. He had a, a plastic tooth in the front. He, he whistled through his teeth. And he's the same age as me. Young, muy guapo. He had a plastic eye because his, his brother hit him with a baseball bat. He was a strange guy. But everything that came out of his mouth was, praise the Lord. That's what I thought was weird at first. Hallelujah, brother. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I found him very provoking and very strange at the same time. I wasn't used to that. I didn't hear that at the temple. <laughs> we probably would have thrown him out. But I followed him around because at one point I said, I want to know if this is really real. And one day, we were building a doghouse for a stray dog that he'd picked up. And we're out in the back and we're of his home and we're sawing lumber and hammering. And you know the sound of a hammer when it hits a nail? Dink, dink, dink. And you know what it sounds like when it hits a thumb? It's a very different sound. And I remember we were back there and he's, he's hammering, I'm sawing, and I heard dink, dink, doom. And I, I'm telling you the truth, I thought to myself, let's see what Brother Jerry has to say now. <laughs> I wasn't born again yet. I was, I was an investigator. I was a fruit inspector. I was really provoked because I said, man, this guy lives a different kind of lifestyle. His, his words are very different than I'm used to. I had my back to him, and I sat, I sat there. I remember going, come on. I know you know the right words. I can help you right here. I turned around, and his face was as red as a tomato, and he was going, And I'm like, come on, come on. And to my actually delight, when he finally opened his mouth, he said, praise God. I said, now that's the real deal. You can change the way you speak if you change the way you think. And if you change the way you think, you have to change what you're listening to because you, faith comes by hearing. I want to encourage you tonight. Be a praiser of God. Be a worshiper of God. We're not ashamed. We're not afraid. When we open our mouths, we don't curse, we bless. When we open up our mouths, we return it to, as praise to the one who's created us and redeemed us. And when we do, we're changing the atmosphere in the very place.